Hi, and welcome to part four in the Getting Started with AWS IoT SiteWise video series. My name is Dave Malone, and I am an IoT solutions architect for AWS. If you are just jumping into this video series, this demo walks through a scenario where we are a manufacturing company producing widgets. On one of our production lines, we have three widget machines that produce temperature and vibration data, which we want to use to predict widget quality and predict maintenance needs. In the previous videos, we ingested data from an OPC UA server, which has our machine data, and created models and assets in the SiteWise console, creating our virtual representation of our manufacturing facility. The data is flowing, and now we need to visualize it. There are multiple ways to visualize your data, including using the SiteWise API or using a published subscribe interface. We also provide a managed web application called SiteWise Monitor, which you can use to view and share your operational data. This video will walk through how to configure your SiteWise Monitor application, as well as demonstrate some dashboarding for our use case. To follow along, it's best if you have either watched the previous videos in the series or already have your data flowing into the assets you've created in SiteWise. Before we get started, let's talk about some SiteWise Monitor concepts, portals, assets, dashboards, and visualizations. First, portals web applications are used to visualize and share your AWS IoT SiteWise data. This is the top of the hierarchy. Each portal contains a set of projects. Projects are organized around a subset of your AWS IoT SiteWise assets, which could be devices, equipment, or processes. You could create a project to understand all the data around one facility, or you could create a project to understand all the data around one production line. Each project contains a set of dashboards, which are a collection of visualizations for values of a set of assets. So you have portals, projects, assets, dashboards, and visualizations. Next, there are three roles with the SiteWise monitor with different permissions for each of these concepts. The first is the portal administrator. Portal administrators create projects that contain collections of assets and dashboards. They then assign owners and the related assets to each project. Project owners create visualizations in the form of dashboards to represent operational data and share them with project viewers. Project viewers can log into the portal and view the dashboard. They can interact with the dashboards, such as to change the time range, but cannot create or edit dashboards. In this video, we will have the role of portal administrator so that we have full capabilities. We can create projects, own projects, and view projects. One thing to note is that you can manage site-wise man monitor roles by using AWS single sign-on. Portal users don't need access to your AWS account. They can sign in to SiteWise Monitor using their corporate credentials or AWS SSO user credentials. All right, so now we're ready to go into the SiteWise console. Go ahead and scroll down and click on Create Portal. We'll have to choose a name for the portal. In this case, we'll stick with the theme that we've been using and enter in Widget Factory. We also have the option to add some of our own branding to the portal. We'll skip that for now, but we do have to enter in a support contact email address. This is an email address for if there are issues or problems for this portal and your users need to contact someone to get resolution. You'll need to think a little bit about what you want this email address to be for when you're building to production but you can also come back and edit this at a later time. We're gonna go ahead and leave the remaining options at their default settings and go ahead and click Create. Continue through the prompts using your profile as the administrator.
From the Portals portion of the AWS IoT SiteWise console, click on the link of the portal that you want to work in. The first time you access this, you may need to log in, and if you can't remember your password, you can build, use the built-in Forgot Password flow to reset your password. Once you're logged in, on the navigation bar on the left, you'll see a set of icons. You can expand the navigation bar to see dashboards, assets, projects, and users. To get started, let's go ahead and click on assets. This allows you to explore all your assets and add them to a project. Click on the asset you want to use for your project and click add asset to the project. This gives you two options, create a new project or to select an existing project. Now that you've created your project, you can add project owners and project viewers. We'll skip this for now. At this point, we have our portal and within that portal, we have a project with assets. The next step is to create a dashboard to visualize the asset data. To do this, we can use the left-hand navigation and click on Dashboards. Click on that, and then make sure you've selected the right project, and then click Create Dashboard. By default, your dashboard will be named New Dashboard. You can click the text to change the name of it. We now have a dashboard, but it is empty. So we need to add visualizations. In the dashboard window, you can add visualizations by dragging and dropping asset properties from the right-hand menu. You can add multiple properties in the same visualization. So in our case, since assets have temperature and vibration data, we can choose to add temperature from each of our widget machines into the same visualization. We can then customize the type using the chart icon in the top right hand corner of the visualization widget. There are four standard visualization types, line, scatter, bar, and KPI. For this one, since temperature data is being read and transmitted frequently, it's best represented by a line graph. Now we can see how the temperature fluctuates across each of our machines over time. We can repeat this process using our vibration data to create a second visualization in the same dashboard. To remove data, I can click on the Added Assets icon, the one with three little arms. which opens a drop-down menu with the asset properties that I added earlier. To remove, simply click the X and then click Save. I want to keep all of my asset properties for now, so I'm not going to do that. Now let's say that I want to know and make it easy for my colleagues to know when an asset property is outside of its normal operating range. To do this, I can configure thresholds. To do this, I have to define its rule and pick the color in which it will show up on my visualization. To do this, click on the configuration icon, which looks like a gear. That will open a menu with an if statement. I will set mine for 90 degrees because that's what I want to know for when my equipment ever exceeds a threshold of 90 degrees Fahrenheit. 
You can set multiple thresholds as well by clicking Add a Threshold button, and you can remove thresholds by clicking the X next to the rule. I can also configure trend lines to make it easier to see the pattern within the data. This is also done within the configuration menu, which again is the gear icon. If you click on the arrow, you can see your trend line options. And in the next box, you can select which data set you want to use for this trend line. You can also add multiple trend lines or use the X to remove trend lines. Once you've made your changes, be sure to click Save Dashboard to save your changes. If you try to close the editor without saving, you'll be prompted to save changes. Now, if I go back to my dashboard view, I can see my two visualizations, one for temperature and one for vibration. I can interact with the visualization, such as adjusting the timelines. And this is something that all roles have the permission to do. Now that I've created the dashboard, I can share this with colleagues by providing them the project viewer access enabling them to log in as they please to view and interact with the data.